don't win anything by Christmas. Nothing's won Absolutely. by Christmas. Absolutely, that's why I said at the beginning of the so conversation. So you just said to me, but, that's, but they've not won anything. No, 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 Graham, what you were saying oh, was, you, win you were talking by about them being beyond criticism, and then you went off, some, they've scored in 35 games, and I said, well, where's that got them so far? Last year they finished fifth and won bugger all. So in those 35 games, which also consumed last season as well, your argument is, and it's always been to the top of this conversation, Liverpool are beyond criticism. And now you've been dragged kicking and screaming to the fact, well, yeah, there, there is some criticism Absolute from given to them. Tosh. Okay. Absolute tosh. Well, tragically, your words, nothing wrong your with, words will betray you. There's nothing wrong with Liverpool, Liverpool's team at this moment in time. Okay. And Just you, like yesterday, fo- they couldn't score. We're focusing on a 90 minutes where they got frustrated and couldn't score. And they're, it happened, they're, gu- they're guilty and of a compounded. key shortcoming yesterday, though, Graham. Talk- we've, we've been an hour talking about it. Then it's compounded because it was Man United and it was compounded yet again. That is indeed true. Because it was Man United that lost 7-0 their last But last they can season. be criticised on an individual game. Listen, if Not you can criticise you. them, God, I'd like to hear what you say about the other eight, 17 teams in the league. Absolutely. But we're not talking about them right now, we're talking about Liverpool. One thing, Simon, we should mention, and I know there'll be a huge rolling of eyes in some quarters, oh really, was it that bad? Well, it would be remiss of us not to mention this. The the Manchester United team bus uh, came under fire yesterday, bottles as it arrived at Anfield pre-match. What was it like in your day, Graham? When when, when you played, every game at Anfield was big, of course it was, but when you played United, it it, it was a massive game. You ever see scenes like this? No, no, no. 100% 100% no, never. And it's so wrong, and this is not the first time, Anfield. I mean, that's taken it to another level, which we can just do with that. Just, it, what does it do? Would it put me off as a player? Not in the slightest. They think they're going to intimidate the Man United players? Not in the slightest. I um, didn't witness it when we went to Manchester or anywhere else. That never happened. That is something which they have to eradicate. And I'll tell you a quick story. I was working for Sky and I went to... Um, Rome to see Man United, Man United playing. Was it Barcelona that played in Rome? Yeah, yeah. And I arrived at Rome Airport. I travelled on my own, and I'm and I made the call because my car wasn't there to pick me up. I stood for an hour outside the airport in Rome, and there was plane loads of Man United supporters came off the bus, off the off the off the plane, walking through the airport, and I was spotted. I never got one bit of criticism from them, not one bit of criticism, and I thought. Fair play, you know, acting properly. Um, for me, I because and I actually for a good fifteen years I lived in the Manchester area. Never got any crit. Not, not, not yeah, a few shouts, but nothing that would um, yeah. keep me awake at night. And I thought that was that was fantastic behaviour. So when I hear about our, when I hear about Liverpool supporters throwing bottles and anything else at a team bus, I mean I have to believe that's kids with you know. They must be on something. To do well, they, I mean, these clowns are letting their club down. Uh, Big I, don't, I don't associate Liverpool, a club with such great history, uh, uh, such a, a, a dignity about the football club, and yet they've got fans like this. Simon, one video this morning, producer Luke and I were looking at it on social media. There's some character filming a bottle, an empty bottle of cider, and then tells us what he's, a, he's about to do and pitches it right, times it perfectly, I have to say, but pitches it. And it bounces off the United team coach. Liverpool, uh, suffice to say, were prompted to put out a statement that the club utterly condemns the actions that led to damage being caused to the United team bus during its arrival. I mean, for for fear of, as I say, a, a lot of people around the country <laughs> saying, well, God, get over it. These things happen. No, they shouldn't happen, Simon. And I don't know what you do to eradicate it. Do you need to have more police yeah, in that em. area when they arrive? Nick them. Have more police around. If that's what, if that's. I mean, the reality of it is, is that it's very difficult for Liverpool Football Club to be entirely responsible for a group of fans outside the stadium and what they do and don't do. And of course, it will be the football club that that suffers the consequences of their behaviour. And Graham is probably right. It's a bunch of twitty little kids that are, you know, away with themselves. And what can you do about it? What can you do about that? But you think the police, CCTV everywhere. You would think they get they get them on CCTV. And then they've got cameras all around the stadium, so they follow them, they know what they're dressed in, they can home in on them, they follow them to where they enter the stadium, and when they enter the stadium, they can then pick them up on another camera, go nick them. Why does it not happen yeah, instantly? But the police will say and ban ma- them for life. The police, Just ban them for life. The police will say on match day that they can't necessarily oh. do that because they've got far too many other things to be doing. But what you could do is you could have a greater level of policing, certainly on flashpoint games like this, where it's 
not beyond the wit of man to understand that there's going to be some people that want to behave in a fashion which is unacceptable to either the, the awake club or the home club in this instance and put more police there and nick them. Mm. The rivalry, the rivalry is a tremendous rivalry, a historical rivalry, and it's spoiled. Well, keep Why it, we, keep it the fact that we're, we're, I mean, we're even talking about it, and how sad are those people really happy today that you know they've got headlines in newspapers that will be mentioned, not just in our program, other people talking about them throwing a bottle at a bus. Yeah. Is that really what Liverpool well, are about? Not just a bottle, a few bottles uh, thro- thrown at the coaches that arrived. But as you rightly say, Graham, I often think, well, what would it be like sitting in that? But if I was a top player, I'm going to play in that game. I'm focused on the game, etc. Would it? Would it affect me? Not a bit. Just wind not a bit. I'd want to go out there and do a job in them. Yeah. You know, Just on the make, team that they support. Make you more motivated if you're Ex- about it. Exactly. But there's no logic to it. I mean, you're, you're trying to understand these people, like trying to understand that someone would go into a game against Leeds United and sing about people that got killed in a football match, that fans that sing about tragedy chanting. What, what, this is a cousin of that. This happens to be a physical manifestation of poor behaviour. But when you've got football fans forever and a day singing hateful songs to one another, you know, what do you do about that? It's yeah. a, as I say, it's a cousin of that sort of behaviour. And you can understand these people... If you can relate to these people by understanding what they're thinking, then you've got a problem as well. What does that tell us, Simon? There's a message. This happens a lot with Liverpool and their fans, albeit a minority. They need to sanction the club. I mean, they did. Uh, they get fined twenty thousand euros, Liverpool, um, well, some time ago when they did when they they big a similar way to Liverpool fans. Otherwise, you'll get MPs writing to you. <laughs> but I mean, they, they do need to do something, do they not? It's pitiful. It's yeah, pitiful. It's, it's pathetic and it's sad it's and it's everything else. It's, it's embarrassing. embarrassing. The football club. Yeah, it's yeah. embarrassing the football club. Absolutely. Yeah. So it nick them. Nick them. It's not, it's, it, you know, put more police on and arrest them and ban oh, them from the football you know, stadium. What, what's Anfield famous for? Hard place to win. The best atmosphere as far as I'm concerned. Ask any player from my generation, anyway, where did you enjoy playing most? It was Anfield. Oh, and it's also famous for what other? Oh, they throw bottles at your bus when you arrive. They got it. Catch them, catch them, nick them and ban them for life. That is yeah. the answer. Yeah, yeah. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.